Hi, this is Sam Botstein for TractorShields.com. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all of our tractor tutorials and check us out at TractorShields.com. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a little bit of a look at the Q section of the track decks in Tractor Scratch Pro 2. This is going to be the same whether you're using Scratch Pro 2 or any other flavor of Tractor Pro 2. We're going to go into a lot more detail on this in some of our future courses at TractorShields.com. But this is just a basic introduction on some ways that you can use cue points and about the different types of cue points and how they work. So the first kind of cue point happens whenever you press the key on your controller, like a control Z2, or the key on your keyboard control corresponding to a certain cue point it gets automatically entered. Here's what that's like. You can also do this just by pressing in the interface. So if I choose some spot where I think it might be a good idea to have a cue point, maybe I think it's a good idea to drop one in right here, right where the beat comes out. Maybe, you know, if I'm mixing really fast, I want to mix out this song right there. So I'm just going to click five and we have a new cue point. Cue points are great. They allow you to, among so many other things, just jump to a certain point of the track and it allows you to sort of reorder the track if you wanted to. If you want to play the drop first and then the build up for some reason, you can absolutely do that. All you would need is two cue points and you'd be something like a controller or your computer keyboard to jump between those points. So here I have three regular plain vanilla cue points. You can see them in this sort of cyan or blue like that. And all you have to do to use them is just press the corresponding buttons to jump to that part of the music. Very simple. However, Tractor allows you to change that cue point to a number of different types. There's fade in, fade out, load, grid, and loop. So we're going to cover beat gridding in another tutorial, but essentially, by the way, you can just uh, delete your cue points by selecting it and then pressing delete there. Essentially, you can use any one for any any old purpose, but I find the mix in and mix out cue points to be extremely useful because they give me a visual indication if I need it as to where to mix out the song. Typically in a lot of DJ sets, I won't let there be no rhythm or no beat for any length of time really. So I have this one at the very end where the beat pulley comes out entirely. I have another one which is also on top of a cue point. You can put as many as all eight cue points on a single moment of the music if you want to. And what these do together is they give me a visual indication that I plan to mix out here. And that I have a loop set up which will do a number of different things. This is one possible use of a loop. You could actually set up a loop that would give you more time to mix out if you're doing a longer mix, a mix that's actually longer than the track itself. I don't necessarily recommend this, especially to a beginner, but if you wanted to do something really interesting, maybe you're going into a track that has a very long uh, build up or you know space to mix in that you want to take advantage of, you could actually just, while the track is playing, hit active right here, or the appropriate button on your controller. And as it moves into the loop, it would automatically make that loop active and loop that loop. So there I've set up a loop that works, meaning that it's round. It is a 16 bar loop, or rather 16 beat loop. And essentially you can listen to it over and over again and then it works. I wouldn't necessarily let your club audience hear the same couple bars of music over and over again if you're not doing any kind of mixing or transition or anything, but this is a way that you can use a loop. There's a lot of different tricks you can do and we'll go over them in future tutorials, but that's the basic way to use one. And to store a loop, all you have to do is you need to select some sort of loop in the music and then assign it to one of the cue points. So here I've just added a loop to cue point number five. Let's go to the mix in and mix out flags. I have a flag to mix in right here. This works well. I've put it over a section of the music that does not have a beat under it. So I can mix this song in 
while there's still uh, some sort of music with beats going on in another track, and I don't have to worry about having beats over beats or mixing all the filters or anything. It's just a very simple mix-in. I have mixed out points right at the end so that we don't end up with uh, sort of no beat if I don't want that. And I have one over this loop, so I know that I put that loop there to allow me to mix out and not for some other reason. I've also included a load marker. Load markers can be really useful. Essentially, the way that they work is when you load up a track, it loads to that point. So you can see that it loaded to my load marker and not some other place. I assigned one here because there actually is a little bit of stuff that Tractor detected just before then. Without the load marker, uh, it would load to the very beginning of the track, which is not the true beginning of this track in this case. There's you know just a little bit of silence or quiet stuff before we really come in. The way that I decided to put it right here is it was round, meaning that if you go to move and move by some multiple of two, you end up where the beat comes in at this cue point number one that I put in here. So I can actually move farther back, but I decided to put the load point there, as I said before, just so I could be playing something else and just load up the track and it shows up at that cue point. Lastly, we actually have the possibility to put in more grid markers. We're going to talk about how to beat grid in future tutorials and courses, but you actually have the ability to store the grid markers in your cue points or not. I choose not to, to allow use of all these different cue point options. And also, you actually have the ability to name these. I never do this, but you can. You can call this the start, and you could call this mix-in point 8 before the beat comes in or whatever you need it, you know. The reason that this particular piece of text doesn't necessarily really help me personally is when you're glancing over at the computer, it's not actually going to give you a lot of meaningful information that you're going to have time to read and then apply to what you're doing. It certainly doesn't currently allow you to display that text back on any kind of tractor controller or really any kind of control surface whatsoever. I hope that this tutorial has given you some good ideas on how to use cue points and the fade in, fade out loop and load markers in Tractor, and I hope it gets you up and running for your DJ gigs soon. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all of our Tractor tutorials and check us out at tractorskills.com.